Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Conscious Living Podcast Series. Today, I have a special, special guest, Rachel Gant of Resounding Joy. And I'd love to introduce her. She is an, a music therapist and then some. We're going to talk more about it. Welcome, Rachel. <laughs> Hi, Ashley. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm excited my... to be here. I'm excited to be here with you, too. It's so great how we how we met. And I know. I, I'm a nurse at Rady Children's Hospital in San Diego, and, and you're a music therapist there. Can yes. you share with us a little bit about what that means? Yeah. So I am lucky enough to get to provide music therapy uh, mostly on the cardiovascular intensive care unit at Rady Children's and on the pediatric intensive care unit. Yeah. So that's that's those are where my home bases are right now. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I provide um, one-on-one or, or inpatient rooms music therapy um, wow. with, with patients, depending all individualized depending on what their needs are and and while they're they're at their uh, stay at Rady Children's. And uh, sometimes uh, outside in the playroom and those kind of things too. So uh-huh. just adapting whatever whatever our patients need and, and supporting them in those areas. Right, right. And so when you walk into a patient's room, you know, in the intensive care units, there's lots of different levels of technology that are happening with them and lots of different levels of life support. Yes. And, and I know, because I, I work with you, that uh-huh. we do it in a lot of different scenarios. So Absolutely. what would be the typical kinds of kids that you see maybe in their age groups and what they're experiencing, are they awake? Are they talking? Yeah. Are they on life support? What kind of measures um, or different situations yeah. can you illustrate for people? Well, I get referrals for really all all ages of children in both of the units that I'm on uh, from, you know, newborns, yeah. infants, all the way to teenagers and sometimes young adults who are admitted on our unit. And the age grouping and depending on why they're there for their hospital stay depends on uh, what referral reasons I have and why I go see them. So when I go see infants, a lot of times, especially newborns, uh, I'm working on, you know, stabilizing vital signs, you know, promoting relaxation, promoting sleep, uh, working, uh, collaborating with parents and and medical staff on different ways to incorporate music and safe and healthy ways to add music and and support care for those infants. Right. uh, As well as... um, Supporting parents' needs too. It's a, it's overwhelming uh, for your small child to be admitted to the hospital, especially shortly after birth. And so, right. uh, supporting parents through teaching them how to interact with their child in the hospital setting yeah. through musical mediums, as well as uh, allowing them space to do some emotional expression and coping with their their experience and what their their world is right now, and uh, doing some songwriting and, and different avenues of that. So. Those are some examples of how I most commonly support infants yeah. uh, at, at Radies with of those age groupings. Well, that's really neat because I, I think many people may not really clearly understand what happens to infants and, and even older kids and, and young adults in the, in the ICUs and other environments in the hospital is when they're there for a while, they lose track of their regular circadian rhythms. So mm-hmm. sleep and wake states Absolutely, are yes. really interrupted. Um, we all do, our, as the whole healthcare team is, we do our best to yes. to facilitate that and normalize that for them. But it's not always possible related to their medical condition or what's going on. And so with that, the music therapy. So when you come into a room and let's say a child or an infant is crying or mm-hmm. disheveled or not not you know not responding really well to their yeah. environment and you come in and and do the music what does that look like how do the how do the children respond how do the parents respond well the best way i can describe it is it almost feels like the entire room just takes the deepest breath yes <laughs> um medical staff and patients some to the little infants as well and yeah. and but especially parents yeah. and everyone kind of feeds off of each other's energy as well so if right. everyone is really anxious and nervous in the room then that's going to affect everyone in the room, including that small infant or patient. Right. And so that's one of the first responses I usually see, just kind of this big breath and the, the bo- everyone's body is just relaxing. Yeah. And then after that, I'm, I'm looking very specifically at how that patient, um, specifically infants, are responding. Am I seeing stress responses? Is that is the auditory stimulation that I'm providing too much, or is it good? Yeah. Um, is it an appropriate amount? Is it calming? So usually we use more lullaby styles. Yeah. I usually use my voice and or guitar or both, uh, and work on helping them calm. Sometimes doing uh, showing parents how to hold them or or provide them some some tactile or um, 
touching and being able to provide them that comfort. Yeah, so with the with, auditory yeah, harmonics or stimulation. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And it really just helps infants organize their body. The it beautiful sure thing does. about music is that it provides this structure in, in the space in our environment, but also within our bodies um, yeah. to be able to give us the sense of comfort. So in uh, an environment where there's noises and alarms going off and people are uneasy and they're not really sure what to expect, it provides this sense of normalcy and a sense of structure and, and calm for everyone's environment. That's so true. It's so beautiful to watch and to see and and to see them integrate. And, and I noticed you all work with interns and other yes. other providers that are learning how to do this work. And it's just wonderful seeing your instruction on guiding them towards the nonverbal cues yes. and the vital signs cues. Absolutely, are very important. That, I mean, it's nice. We All the kids in the, in the intensive care units are monitored, mm -hmm. so you have direct access to understanding what the heart rate is and breathing mm -hmm. and all, all of that. And it's so nice because you integrate that so well and, and, and auditorily support that with the interns, which yes. then the other medical staff, hear that as well in the room and then they start to learn too from a music perspective mm -hmm. and a gentleness and a, a peacefulness and a harmony you know it's really bringing harmony to that next level mm -hmm. and that then it, it really gives insights to other healthcare professionals and the parents about how to help cue the child into those different states yes. and to notice when they're not having a great state yes. or that harmonics kind of doesn't fit them yes. or doesn't match them. Yeah. I know you don't play heavy metal in yeah. there, but <laughs> not normally, not normally, <laughs> maybe in the teenager's room. But so. I have turned some very interesting adult preferred music into lullaby styles for parents. Wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which is always a fun challenge. That is. Yeah. <laughs> that is. So so tell me, how did you get started? Like just to really to yeah. illustrate to the kids, the older kids, and some parents maybe that see musical preference and children that may be listening to this podcast. Yeah. If they were to really be involved in music and then you sense that they want to be, for example, a healthcare provider. Yeah. Not every healthcare provider has to be a nurse, right? No. Or a doctor, a respiratory therapist, or a nutritionist, or all mm -hmm. the other healthcare providers we have on the team. But you're also a very, and, and your team is a very yeah. integral part of the bigger team. And, you know, we call it through a process called integrative medicine, but it really is truly integrative. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's a extremely valuable part of the team. And so if these if parents and children are experiencing, I want to take care of people and I want to do music, mm -hmm. this is really a great opportunity to share what yeah. that means. Well, I think it is, but I'm slightly biased. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's true. I'm very honored to be part of the care team and um, all of the staff members at Radies and, and any staff, any care team I've been on. But it's it's truly a beautiful um, a beautiful team to get to work with and get to yeah. support emotional and social skills and goals and expression and sometimes physical motor goals and and kind of more developmental speech and language communication so right. uh, it's yeah it's a it's a beautiful way to see all of the different members of the care team working together to support that whole child right so, yeah right. yeah and oh, to speak uh, just a minute to uh, getting a, a, a few different points I wanted to speak to as yes, you were talking please. that you made that you made me think of is I was interviewing a, a doctor recently just about music therapy and the program at uh, Rady Children's at what it brings to patients. And and they said, you know, it gives me an, a, a different perspective to see that patient because when I come into the room and see them, it's usually sometimes more distressed or I don't get to see this different side of them or their abilities and capabilities and interests and interactions. So it gives me, uh, by observing you and, and interacting with you with, the, with my patients, I get the chance to find a different way to connect with them and yes. to support them. So that was just a, a, a thing I thought I would share that was a, a interesting thing that came Oh, up it's, it's really huge. Yeah. And I think working with child life therapists and mm -hmm. different things and, and putting, we're going to talk about some of the musical toys yeah. that you've brought, but, yeah. <laughs> but even having them inside the playroom now as another yeah. adjunctive toy versus our typical toys like Play-Doh and cars and yeah. puzzles and things like that. We get to have musical toys too because yeah. now the kids have been instructed on how they can utilize them. They've identified some of their preferences, yep. and then they can pull them from the shelf too, and yeah. they can interact with their family even when you're not in there with them. Exactly. Or the nurses and the doctors can start to do it too mm -hmm. as playful adjuncts to enter yes. the room and begin to examine them or work with them or know what they're doing. Yeah. 
And you're right. Um, a lot of the medications that we use for sedation really do alter their senses of reality and and their connectivity to their world. A lot of our, our drugs are disassociative. Mm-hmm. They're meant to be that way so that they don't feel as much pain or anxiety. And it really does challenge them to kind of, when they're getting better, to come yes. back. Yes to our real world and That's what we're doing transition. It's a very yeah. difficult transition. Mm-hmm. And I think we as um, bedside healthcare providers mm-hmm. have a really challenging time with that. And music is one adjunct to be able to help uh, re-regulate their brain and nervous system yes. back to what we, we consider an everyday life where they're re-establishing their activities of daily living and learning how to take care of themselves again yeah. from being in a, a, a critical state of health. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I know. It's a beautiful thing. Music is processed in our entire brain. Yeah. And so we have the ability to, you know, access the emotion center and the, and the motor centers and all of these different aspects. So when a child is um, post-surgery or pre-surgery or a transplant, right. uh, we get to really support them in all the different dynamics of need yeah. um, and care for that patient. So, right. you know, when they're coming off of sedation or, or starting to, to um, wean off of that medicine, we can be there to support and help that coping process and then you know when they're they're actually feeling good and they have the go ahead to do more motor goals then we can collaborate with physical therapy and and work on that aspect of it so it it really is a truly beautiful thing to be able to work with patients in in multiple different areas of care right through that whole continuum of care exactly when they first come in and then when they are getting ready Mm -hmm. to go home and and maybe even helping them going home as part of their, is what we call discharge planning, but part of their their transition to going home is really that music integration and that yes. part that it, you've, you've either revitalized music in their life or introduced it for the very first mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And it's pretty phenomenal about the, the implications of what that means as a way to help them maybe, maybe now later in life they'll use in stressful moments or times mm-hmm. They'll use music or musical instruments yeah. as an opportunity to transition those those stressful times. Yeah, that's 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 our hope. So yeah, that's that's the goal. You know, impact them when they're there, and then hopefully they we can teach them how to implement those things on their own. So that yeah. they're using those healthy um, developmental or you know strategies to gain skills or cope or yeah express themselves. So. Exactly, and so. When you were growing up yes. and, and wanting to be, uh, you know, and becoming a music yeah. therapist, what did that mean to you? And, what and uh, you know, I did not really understand the magnitude of what it took for mm-hmm. somebody to become or, to, or the process that it, they go through to become a musical therapist in an inpatient environment like yeah. that. And if you could share with everyone, because I think it's really phenomenal to notice what what it is that you have brought to the table as far as when you when you deliver this music therapy into the room yeah i have always you know a little bit about myself i have always loved music and have always been a singer and you know performed and things and when i was trying to decide what i wanted to do in college i had no idea really i just knew i loved to sing and i was very interested in psychology and a helping profession and or a medical healthcare profession but I wasn't really sure what that meant, and so I had never heard of music therapy before. Right. And I was touring college campuses with my mom, and she convinced me to go tour the music education department at the University of Kansas, and it happened to be the same department as the music therapy department. And I had the chance to speak to one of the professors and read the pamphlet, and I said, yep, that's what I'm doing. So <laughs> uh, I actually had not heard about it until I was looking to figure out what I wanted to do as wow. a career in my life. Yeah. And uh, it just has, for me, been the perfect combination of my loves and my passions and, and getting to to share that and fortunately get to do that every day of my life. So, yeah, and so is yeah. that, so becoming a music therapist, that's mm-hmm. a four-year degree in a college? It is, okay. yeah. There's over 72 accredited colleges and universities throughout the United States okay. that have music therapy, um, AMTA, which is American Music Therapy Association, approved programs. Okay. And uh, to become a music therapist, you have to have a minimum of a bachelor's degree or okay. higher. You can get up to a, a PhD in music therapy. Wow. Uh, and uh, it's typically four years. Okay. Uh, and you also have to complete 1,200 hours of clinical training which through your internship, which you mentioned okay. I have interns with me. So yes. uh, we actually have an internship program, and part of their internship program is being with me at Radio Children's doing music therapy. I know. So. It's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. It's and so beautiful because when you're in the room and you have an opportunity to teach or, you know, an, an obligation or, or part of the mm-hmm. process – 
other people are listening to it mm-hmm. and other people are knowing what you're doing and you're really yeah. like you said about the physician you are helping other people connect to this process as well yeah. while you're teaching yeah versus just providing that care yeah so. which i love that aspect too i really enjoy teaching and I, I think we're all teachers and students at different points in life, so I, I enjoy that. Aspect. Or even simultaneously. <laughs> oh, definitely simultaneously. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, it that's is. Very true. It so, is. It's fantastic. Yeah. So okay. then after interns are finished with their hours, then they have completed their education program and they have the opportunity to sit for their board, their board certification exam. Okay. And if they pass, hopefully, then, then they would get the credentials of MTBC, Music Therapist Board Certified, which okay. is the credential necessary to be a music therapist in the United States. I see. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, like, for kids in different things in different mm-hmm. age groups, let's say, I don't know, kids over 10, what would you suggest if they're really – if parents and the children are really thinking this is really what I want to do yeah. well how would you help them or give them an idea of some guidance on preparing through the years of um, you know maybe middle school and then high school mm-hmm. into college what would what could they do to kind of ready themselves for this kind of career and learning process that's a great question uh, I would say two different two different aspects okay. one would be exploring music skills okay I mean uh, to be proficient you have to be able to be proficient in uh, percussion, piano, guitar, and voice to be okay. able to graduate from a music therapy program. Wow. And so any exploring in that would be a bonus. Okay. I went to college never playing piano or guitar, so could you it share, definitely is a help if you know you, those skills Could you before share that hands. with us again, the four, the four ones? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, percussion. Percussion. So any drums, world percussion, different types of uh, okay. percussion instruments, piano. Okay. Uh, guitar. Guitar. And voice. And voice. So that's singing? Yes. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So those are the areas you have to be competent in. But then um, any person is still a music major. So if you play the oboe or the clarinet or the violin, you you still access those. So we have music okay. therapists who uh, their primary instrument, which what we call it, is okay. their their main thing that they, is they're really good at. Uh, doesn't have to be those four things. It can okay. be anything, and so you can pursue that as well. But those those would be uh, helpful ones to know before college. You right. can do it, but. Uh, I get it, but at least point. having some experience in yeah. it and so that it doesn't feel so foreign to you in yes. college. Yeah, it was, okay. it was a lot to learn in college, yeah. not knowing those things. Right. And well, the other you. thing I recommend is just volunteering with different age groups Okay. Um, or, or getting summer jobs. I mean, if you're a, a student, um, I remember uh, going from high school to college for three summers, I worked in the mental, mental health center with kids in our summer programs. And okay. that was really helpful to me, uh, volunteering at hospitals or any place, nursing homes, retirement communities, uh, any place that there are music therapists, see if you can kind I of uh, volunteer with them or yeah. learn from them. Or it doesn't even have to be with a music therapist, just get experience working with people. Yeah. Um, is one of the biggest uh, helps yeah. that I see as a benefit for people. Well, I agree, so especially if you're going to be a clinical musical therapist mm-hmm. in the hospital. Yes. Having some hospital experience does help because Absolutely. it can be an overwhelming environment. It can be. It can be a lot very of overwhelming. Yeah. yeah, it can be very overwhelming. So getting some experience in those environments and just not even in a music therapist role, but yeah. just as a person connecting right. with other people in those uh environments is is really helpful so that you yeah. that part is not as new to you and yeah. you're, you're used to those different environments and places and and what that experience looks like so that when you then transition into the professional aspect of it that right. all of those aspects are already familiar it's smoother and yeah. easier yeah. yeah yeah less for you to handle and adjust to yeah mm-hmm. well speaking of that you brought a few toys over here I would did. you would you like to share with us what <laughs> some of those are well i use a variety of instruments um you really sure all the do. music i very rarely use recorded music can i um, share with them your your music box it's pretty amazing yeah. in in the intensive care unit <laughs> I don't, I don't know how it probably came to be. Probably it was a fun story. But she has this very huge cabinet. And it basically what it's really designed for is to hold surgical surgical items mm-hmm. for different programs um, in the operating room and then in the intensive care unit. But you have turned it into and you've made an EKG with tape yeah. <laughs> that, has a, that has a heart rhythm with the heart around it. Uh-huh. And then it has music notes has through it. It has a guitar. It. <laughs> and it's really cute. Yeah. And inside this surgical looking cabinet mm-hmm. is all of your music toys. Yes. So it's a rather great transition <laughs> to the medical environment. Yes. We couldn't bring that here in the studio today. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah it, uh, yes, it used to be an old ECMO cart. And um, yeah. actually, most people 
when I'm pushing it down the hall think that has food in it. So there's <laughs> sometimes very disappointed when I can't offer them any food. Uh, <laughs> but, but it's nice you have the tape around. Yeah, exactly. give the idea to cut music. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I have a variety of instruments in there. I always have one guitar with me. I okay. usually have uh, two to four ukuleles. Um, drums. I have this drum that sounds like an ocean. I have this I know, I drum that. that is called a happy drum, yeah. which is usually everyone's favorite. The name of it probably hints that it's awesome. Uh, and it's just a very calm drum that you play. Um, a, a few of these. So I have the paddle drums that yeah. usually people us, think they're racket you, yeah. ball. <laughs> yeah, show us what that means to yeah. like play them in, yeah. in, in the sense of uh, therapeutic music. Yeah. Well, these drums are more specifically designed uh, for... This one looks like a lollipop. It does look like a lollipop, which I use these with kids. for. When I worked with adults, you have ones that actually look more like racquetball rackets so that <laughs> they're not as child-focused. <laughs> but they're designed for easy play. So okay. um, hopefully that's not too loud for no, the speakers. that's beautiful. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's, a, it's an easy way to grasp. It's... Very easily accessible. I can hold it if kids don't have a you know a great range of motion. Especially they if they have play. an IV in their exactly. hand. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And an arm. And they're pretty light. So yeah. as far as drums go, there's not an enormous uh, physical need. But also, I can work on range of motion, like reaching all the way up, all the right. way down. You know, lots of different aspects of it. So they're really versatile instruments to be able to adapt to whatever a child needs. Also, uh, especially if you know, they're stuck on isolation in their room and can't get out. It's a great mode of just anger and aggression expression. Yes. <laughs> Play the drum as we loud won't do as that. you can. No, no, no. We won't be doing that today. Uh, but a lot of a lot of my patients do uh, yeah. play and, and get as much energy and expression as they can out in a positive social, you know, method and avenue to express with their right. parents sometimes, with nursing staff a lot of times. Right. Uh, try to bridge those gaps where... Um, allows medical staff to come in and experience those those times as well. So it's a positive connection and right. not always having to come in and start an IV or, right. you know, those, those Do a more, medical procedure. Yeah, those yeah. more negative looked upon from a patient's perspective. Absolutely. Um, and Yeah. And then Rhythm Sticks is the other one that I brought. Oh. I apparently forgot my maracas to bring. So, <laughs> um, And Rhythm Sticks are, again, easy to play, easy to access, easy to sanitize as well. <laughs> and they have some just fun sounds. Yeah. So... Yeah. Wow, that's neat. Yeah, and then getting families all playing together is huge. So yeah. all the instruments I bring in the room, you anyone can play. You can have no music experience whatsoever and instantly be successful at playing instruments, which is the goal. Wow, that's so. just that's beautiful too. And I agree with you about families having a difficult time and knowing that it can be. We can also incorporate it in between things um, a playtime, and I think yeah. it's really important because I think we do lose a little bit of that perspective mm -hmm. in the intensive care unit. You know, yeah. we we wait till they're out of there or yeah. in those sort of situations. But some of our patients have um, unique situations. They have to stay for a little while, and they yeah. have to stay on some specialized medicines or different things, um, but they still get to be awake, yeah. walk around, talk, mm -hmm. eat, and do all those typical things, but they're missing out on the fun, yeah. and they're missing out on knowing what to do. And when a child of any age or anyone is in the intensive care unit, the family has this whole genre idea that they're critically ill in that moment every moment. Yes. And that they can't be played with, they can't be touched, they can't be, you know, regular activities of daily living. And, and I, yeah. I'm so excited that you all bring that in. I mean, yeah. we have other processes in the hospital, mm -hmm. too. We, we have puppy time yes. and petting time and we have harp music mm -hmm. and we have acupuncture and, all, and energy healing. Mm -hmm. We have all sorts of different levels of support. Yes. But it is really nice because that that really increases the level of interaction mm -hmm. with the family as well. And yeah. they get to know that, oh, I can bring playtime in too, yeah. and I can participate in that way with the, with my child. Yeah. I had a mom share with me one time that when their child was hospitalized that they had always previously used music to, you know, just for themselves when they're sad or happy or really all throughout their life. and. Once their child got hospitalized, they felt guilty. They felt they didn't listen to music anymore. They felt, I shouldn't be able to experience happiness if my child is in the hospital. And, wow. and she said, uh, you know, when, when you came into the room and you gave me this way to interact with my child in the hospital, it showed me that I can experience joy with my child. And this yes. is a way that I can connect with them and, and 
they kept saying joy. I mean, it was this, uh, there was this opportunity and it showed me a way to interact with my child and showed me that even in the hospital that we can share happiness and we can share joy in those times. And these are the ways that I can connect and, and, and engage with my child. So it, it's absolutely. And, and I just wanted to share too yeah. the therapeutic part because um, I've, se- I've seen it firsthand and, 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 th- and have spoken with you and yes. the interns about that a little bit about how we see, es- especially in you know, toddlers, mm-hmm. infants. Um, but it's really easy to say because they have less what we call auto regulation. Mm-hmm. So they have less adaptability yet or skill sets to be able to adapt to changing environments. Yeah. And even in their own room, their environment changes from moment to moment. Mm-hmm. And so when they get to experience the music therapy, they actually are learning and deepening their brain and nervous system, and they're integrating yeah. much better. And I do believe, I don't know if we have all kinds of studies yet out about it, but I do really do really feel this true sense that these children are healing faster. Mm-hmm. They're healing more organized they're healing more completely, maybe as a whole being for yes. sure. Yes. But what I mean is even medically, their healing time is enhanced mm-hmm. because we've reintegrated that level of harmony with the brain and nervous system. Yes, And we've re- helped that connection and then that connection to on a human basis, heart basis, spiritual basis, emotional basis mm-hmm. of connecting with each other through that, that, through that element of play and harmony. Yeah, yeah that's – thank you for – for saying that and for bringing that up and it's it really is very important that integration piece of it and how are we um, helping them to cope and you know from young infants to you know preteens and teenage children uh, that are in the hospital need that help and support too especially if they have a long hospital stay it can be really hard and uh, and it really you're right the longer they're there they're more their their normalcy gets distorted yeah and their sense of what their home is like and what their life is like really mm-hmm. does change. Yeah. And it's really challenging for all of them, no matter what age yes. they are, including the parents and family members, even extended family members, to really develop that sense of what that means to come back to that. Because yeah. many times they don't come back to anything. They're recreating a whole new yes. perspective from the moment they yeah. come in. Yeah. And so their life changes. and. And, and adding these levels of support really does help them integrate this new opportunity, new situations. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a wonderful thing to be able to experience. It and sure is. And, and, and we wanted to really illustrate to everyone today about um, that we yes. have a little card up here for everyone to see on the live podcast. But then also as you're listening to it. Um, I will also include it in a in a YouTube video that we're going to make. But Thank you. later this year, April 28th, yep, on 2018 at 5:30 p.m. And it's in San Diego at the Irwin M. Jacobs Qualcomm Hall in San Diego. Yep. I'm not sure where that is. It's kind of in the Mira Mesa area, like Sorrento okay. Valley, Mira Mesa area. Okay, and they're running a their seventh annual benefit yes. concert, Heart of a Child. Tell us a little bit about that. If people go to yeah. that, what what does that mean? What are they what are they going to go to experience, and what are yeah. they donating to? So this is actually our only annual event that supports music therapy at Rady Children's Hospital and provides no cost music therapy uh, yeah. at the hospital. I am the only music therapist there right now, and I've been there for three years, and we've grown from twelve hours a week when I first started to now full time. Wow. So we hope to grow even more because there's so many patients at the hospital that need music therapy support yeah. uh, as part of their care team that don't have it right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're only on the two units mostly, and uh, right. so many other patients need it at the hospital for neurology and different well, areas. Yeah, so, we're, so we're hoping to know, grow it. <laughs> we, we grow in all kinds yes. of ways on and numbers of patients' beds, uh, yeah. anywhere from 180 to 250 and yeah. growing more. Um, but it, we're really a unique kind of hospital, too, because um, about 100 or so beds are allocated to intensive care beds, mm-hmm. which is pretty which is pretty unique. Um, and so there are a lot of intensive care kids there. There are a lot of kids that are receiving other kinds of specialized support as well that are not necessarily in the ICU that would truly benefit from Absolutely. this as well. Yeah. 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 We have a lot of people who are like, please get more funding so you can come be with our patients. So, yeah. So what yeah. we would like to really, really encourage you to, it's $25 a mm-hmm. ticket. Can they also, even if they don't go, but yeah. they'd like to participate in the contribution, mm-hmm. can they, can they um, sign up to, to 
donate? Is there a place on Absolutely. your website? There's okay. a place on our website where you can donate. Oh, fabulous. Uh, and you can become a, mon a monthly donor to support. <gasps> wow. Uh, and you can also give one-time donations okay. as well. And and really, you're, you're, if you donate online or if you come to the, the event and are supporting us, you, you really truly are supporting children and families when they are at their most vulnerable um, and yeah. experiencing some type of trauma. Uh, right. regardless of, of what that experience is for them. And, you know, giving them an opportunity to experience joy in times where they might not be able to. And I'm I'm so grateful to be able to be the person that works with them and, and hope that people really do understand how it really does provide a different opportunity to change people's lives when, when sometimes it world can seem very dark so yeah uh our the concert actually is really amazing yeah tell me about that <laughs> what, what will has, people experience when yeah they go? there's a couple different aspects there's some food trucks outside at the beginning uh during our silent auction time which usually has some pretty awesome things i mean we're music therapists so yeah. we like wellness so usually yeah. i mean in, pra in past years there have been like massages and all different kinds of like wellness aspects as well as you know trips and experiences and and different kinds of things at the silent auction and then after that, we have our concert, which is children last year, I think our youngest was five years, wow. all the way through college age, any all from San Diego County. Wow. And uh, I remember the first year I went to the concert, actually, I thought, okay, you know, this is children performing at a concert. And uh, I went in to listen to the first one and being a music major myself, who's always performed um, this, I'm pretty sure this eight year old is a lot better than myself having dedicated my life to music. So uh, it's not your typical kind of like children's music. performance or recital. Um, these children are amazing. Last year we had a 12 year old pianist who had played Carnegie Hall eight times. So, I mean, wow. it's truly an, a phenomenal concert and just wow. um, a beautiful thing to see these children who are extremely gifted musically donate because they're they're children who normally get paid for their performances yeah um donate their time their energy and their gifts to support children who need them so uh, it's really cool to hear them talk about it as well wow. so you get to hear a lot of amazing kind of music we have like a mariachi band this year and uh, wow. some really cool things last year we had a a, a kid that was the robot dancer on um, America's Got Talent. So we got some really good, uh, impressive, talented kids at our concert. And it's just a good time. So oh, a good time wow. supporting kids who, who need your help. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. My goodness. Such a wonderful idea yeah. and such a wonderful way to have... And, and this is another way, too, is children are giving back to children. I know. Yeah. That's a really wonderful concept. It really is. Yeah. yeah. It really is. It's very yep. endearing. If, 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 I, if the children in our county can see that, then surely the adults in our county can see it, too, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. How many people can attend? That is a good question. We have never sold out, so I say as many can come. We'll okay. find a way to fit you all in. And the other thing that would be really neat, too, is maybe some of our graduates from the from the intensive care unit yeah. might want to um, come and join and see yeah. what see what it's like on, you know, really becoming a performer. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. I also, I do try to let any, as many patients and families know that if they want to go, that um, I can, I can make sure that they, they're able to attend. So yeah, yeah I try to oh, make sure. Last year we had, I think three families come. So we'll yeah. see if we have any more that are able to come. That's to come beautiful. This year. Yeah. And yeah. I think my goal is to have a decent amount of, uh, Brady Children's Hospital staff come too. So I think we'll that's see. great. I think we have a so far a, at least a small group coming. So yeah. hopefully, yeah. I know I'm coming. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring my bandwagon. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Well, before we close, yeah. you have you have a special treat for us. I do. Would you like to share? I do. Uh, so part of the music therapy support is sometimes allowing parents to express and write a song for their child and, and yeah. to put all of their emotions and things that they're processing into this song format. And a parent best described it. She said, uh, this is the best therapy that I've gotten here. <laughs> and she said, you know, um, it was a way for me to take all of these jumbled and scattered emotions and put them into something to where I really felt like I could express myself and that I was heard. Right. And also it's something that, um, you know, 
embodied the emotion and what I want my child to know throughout this experience and, right. and, and, and give me a way to share this very special thing with them. So uh, we do songwriting with parents a lot of times and, and uh, I'm able to record uh, patients' heartbeats and put that actually as the rhythm of the song for wow. the parents to have as a keepsake. So I don't have the heartbeat to share, <laughs> That's uh, but so I have beautiful. one of the songs that a family, a family wrote that gave us consent to share. Oh, uh, with anyone. fabulous. So, it's so exciting. Yeah. So this is, uh, the song is actually called Michaela's Song. Okay. Yeah. Michaela. Let's see if I can not hit the, there we go. Okay. Okay. Michaela, you are strong. You are loved. You are exactly the girl you're supposed to be. You are a fighter. You don't give up. You don't need to be afraid because you can do anything. Your heart beat is perfect to me. Strong and steady. Trust your heart, you are enough, you are enough. You changed my world, you complete me, you redefine the meaning of love. You're my everything. Your heart beat is perfect to me. Strong and steady. Trust your heart. You are enough. You are enough. You are enough. You are enough. Wow. Yeah, so that's that's a song that um, this parent had no music experience other than listening to music. And, uh, you know, we, through a music therapy session, helped her just put her words and feelings and oh, emotions into a song. Oh, it's so deep. It's yeah. so connecting. It's so heartfelt. Yeah. It's so heart healing. Yeah. It really yeah, it was, is. It was a, a special experience for them and, and something that they've shared with me that they uh, play with their child all the time and <laughs> <laughs> have used in a lot of different things. We'll have, so, to, so. We'll have to give them the recording. I know. Yes. I, they have. They have the recording. Okay, so. good. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's so beautiful. It's Thank so you. inspirational. Yeah. The work you do and the work your company is bringing, that's resoundingjoy.com. Mm -hmm. Resoundingjoyinc.org. Re okay, yep. thank you very yep. much. <laughs> Resoundingjoyinc.com. .org. Do dot org. I dot know, org. it's thank tricky. You. It's so long. It's all right. I should have to say my email address all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really beautiful and really thank inspirational. You. And thank you so much yeah. for sharing with us today Absolutely. this beautiful process. And yeah. there's so many ways we all can contribute to supporting your cause and what's happening because yes. it's just beautiful and it really does need to grow. Yeah. It really does. It's yes, so well needed. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Ashley. It's yeah. been an absolute joy and um, thank you for helping just highlight what, you know, we do in the program and how we're supporting patients and, and also, you know, to help us, hopefully get some more people there on the 28th so we can just yeah. make Yeah, well, you have program. lots of interns that I know. need positions. So, <laughs> it's true. So we're yeah. ready to do it. <laughs> Help students get jobs. Let's, no. let's fund that because yes. it's really, really vital to their yeah. healing process. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for yeah. joining us today.